everyone. It's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio. Sorry, I haven't made a video in a couple days, but I just was in a funk. <laughs> and so I just didn't want to do it. Sometimes you just don't want to and you don't have to. Uh, I am bringing you another couple of mixed media altered shipping tags using the prompts from the hashtag AJOS abstract August event from Art Joy of Sharing. Tomorrow will be another live stream from Art Joy of Sharing at 8.30 Pacific Time. And you can come over to that channel and watch it if you want. It'll be some more abstract stuff. We're doing abstract and abstract expressionism with prompts all month of August. And then it will be over at the end. So uh, we're, we're getting closer to the end, but there's still time to join. You can do as many prompts as you want. You can do them all on one piece. You can do them on individual pieces. This time I'm making again a couple little tags that already have something on them, paint or something on them. And I have this whole pile of these. I want to use them up. I want to make them into something. So um, that's what I'm doing. This prompt is scrape. And so I grabbed some uh, it's kind of medium body acrylic paint. I do have heavy body somewhere, but I didn't want to dig it out. So I just grabbed this paint in uh, three different colors and I used my handy dandy uh, color wheel to depict my colors. I've, I've been in a fall color mood and so I wanted to do some reds and golds and colors like that. And so that's what I was looking for. I started out by picking this color that's called uh, alizarin crimson hue which is a type of red is kind of a cool red and then I looked on my color wheel and I decided to do a split complementary using light olive green and what's this one called uh, deep green permanent so this is a blue green and a yellow green right so split if you look at, at red straight across from red is its complementary color which is green and then the I'm using the green on the sides of, like the yellow green and the blue green on the sides. So that's called a split complementary. And I have all these different scraping tools. They, uh, some of them are credit cards that I've cut up or that I've just been using for a long time and they've got a lot of gunk on them. Uh, other ones are a package of them that I bought off of Amazon and I'll link that in the description box below. It has some different, different, uh, Thing, different, uh, what I don't know, it would make channels if you were scraping. Uh, when I want, thought about doing um, cold wax is when I bought these. But there's lots of things you can scrape with. And you can, as you can see, I got out some gold gesso. And I got a plastic fork, which is just a tool I have in my little bucket there. And I'm using that to scrape. And it makes a, you know, four times makes a four line scrape. And then I got out a skewer. And I'm doing some of that weird writing that doesn't mean anything, but kind of does in your mind. But it, you can't read it, that type of writing. And I did all that with gold gesso. And then I dried all that up and I decided I wanted to add a little bit, a bit of this glitter paste that I have. This is Glitz Glitter Gel from Gina Kane Designs, uh, manufactured by Thermoweb. And it's gold glitter in a paste. And so I decided to use a stencil. This is a stencil from Stencil Girl Products. And I believe it's from a club. Um, I'm in the stencil club where I get exclusive stencils every month. And this, I believe, is a 4 by 4 from one of those. I'll look up the links. If you belong to the club, you can order past months once you belong. So you could still get this. And then this is a different a different one. These are ones I have on my desk um, that I use frequently. So I wanted to make a few dots here and there with the glitter just um, so that the glitter wasn't in that one spot. And then trying to clean it off. And uh, when you clean it off, it, you can smear a little bit and you end up getting it kind of here and there. But it still looks cool. It's not a big deal. And it won't flake off because it's a paste, which is what I like about it because glitter can be a mess. And then I took those two stencils and immediately washed them off in the sink because once that stuff gets on there and stuck to your stencil, it makes it bumpy. So that wasn't cool. I still thought this needed something. So I decided to add a rub on word that says dream. And I. It, it's like a it's like a plastic stuff that's stuck on a piece of plastic and you lay it down you peel the back off lay it down and then you you rub it 
and it transfers that kind of sticky plastic to your project. Uh, you know, robots are cool, but there's but they you don't really find a lot of them anymore. But uh, you know, they're here and there. They're kind of fun. Then I just decided this one needed a back, and I used some black cardstock that's a glossy cardstock scrap that I had to make a little frame all the way around the outside of the tag and it also has the benefit of co covering up the mess on the back <laughs> and I was trying to get it straight and even and it took me a minute I had to get out my trimmer and trim a piece of it off because it wasn't quite equidistant all the way around so that was bugging me a little bit but I like the colors I like the different textures I got from the scraping the tag at the start had some white gesso on it, so none of the stuff that I scraped onto it stuck in to the, you know, it didn't suck into the card because it already was gessoed. Then I just need a couple of fibers through the top because I like to put them on my tags. And I picked a piece of black organza and then a red piece of twine, which gives a contrast between this shimmery fat organza and the thin kind of real rustic twine. So I like that. I also put some glossy uh, stuff over the dream because there were spots that it wasn't stuck down and it just kind of looked weird. So um, it was hard to see in the video. And so that's the finished scrape project for that prompt. And these, of course, will be close-ups. A lot of texture. So the next prompt is squiggle and I'm looking through my stack of tags that already has stuff on them and I found this one. This is a piece of collage on there and I believe that that was made probably with a gel print on some deli paper. I don't know but it's collaged on there and then it looks as if it has a thin watered down layer of gesso over the top. So it was really I don't know, chalky and faded looking. And so I decided to give it a glaze of quinacridone gold. So I just used some, some uh, fluid paint, mixed it with a little bit of water and gave it a glaze before I started to work on it. And it already has this squiggly, interesting look, right? So <laughs> this one, this one ended up being a bit tricky and uh, it has a lot of layers on it. I wish this first layer had actually turned out. So I'm using some uh, handmade pastels and some pastel pencils. So you know, pastel is a chalk, it's dry. And there's there's a, a bumpy texture on this, so I figured it would be good with pastels and I just wanted to play with them. I have this new set of artist, artist handmade pastels I wanted to play with. And I also thought maybe the pastel pencils would be good because they can get into finer areas. So I was just going through and highlighting what I was seeing in the pattern already. And I used some purple and some rust and some um, kind of a light yellow and some blue, some orange, and it was looking pretty cool. Here's the problem I have with pastels. Whether it's pan pastel, whether it's chalk pastel, all these types with the exception of oil pastel because they have oil in them, need to be sealed, right? They're just, they're not going to stay there on their own. They're a chalky surface and if you touch it, it smears. And this is the reason that I don't use pastels often. I think that they're fun, but I just, I haven't found a good way to seal them without the color changing. I love the way this looks. The the light yellow on the edges is beautiful. You know, I've got the purple on there and I've got the red and it's all nice bright colors. And I know I wanted to do something over the top, but this was a beautiful bright background. So I thought, how can I seal it? How can I seal that? And I thought, well, I could take it outside and spray it, but the spray changes the color. Um, so I decided to try clear gesso because I thought, well, I, I use clear gesso all the time to seal stuff, right? So I brayed the, the clear gesso over it, and once I had dried it, it was dark. It was dark and muddy, and I don't know if that's because, well, I know the colors change, the pastel colors change when you seal them. Um, it's just a fact, but I don't know if maybe 
by doing the brayer over the top, which would be the same thing if you did it with a brush, it would be even worse because you'd be brushing everything around. But the brayer might have maybe blended some of the colors too much. And I was like, ugh, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> so I decided to add some more scribble and squiggle on top using these um, acrylic inks that have a dropper inside. They're just, they're real fun. I've been having a lot of fun with these lately and I was still into that fall color mode. And so I decided to use kind of a, I think the three colors I picked are all from the Matisse line from Tracy Bautista colors. I think Poppy and um, maybe the maybe the bluish one is teal or turquoise and then the other one is I don't know it's it's a, a yellow like an ochre color so I put those on and I was having fun and they blended a little bit I wasn't having I didn't care that much about the blending I in fact I even put a little bit of water on there to blend it some more and I blotted it back a little bit and it pretty much obliterated what was underneath. There's still some of that purple peeking through, but the purple had darkened so much from the ceiling that it almost looks, I don't know, it just looks muddy. So once that was dry, then I decided to uh, put some white on there to try to, I don't know, add an extra dimension of squiggle. So I used my white India ink and I squiggled with it down the tag in a vertical way with the little dropper inside and then I used a, a, my skewer and scraped through it and made it more interesting and I liked that but then now I needed to still lighten it up a little bit so I mixed some of that yellow color and then the white together and with a brush added some of that onto the tag just because it was it was looking so dark and gloomy so when you're making a tag like this, you know, I'm going to give it away or something. I'll give it away at some point, some way. It can be used as a bookmark or it can be, you know, you can put it up on your refrigerator, up on the wall or something in your studio. Um, so it is a piece of art that I'm working on, but I probably would not have worked this many layers <laughs> because um, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't become happy with it. It just was like, ugh. I don't like it. And sometimes it's like that. You just, and you just have to keep working. So I decided to put some collage over the top because collage doesn't get dark when you seal it, right? It stays pretty much the same color. So I took some of that paper that you saw me make with the deli paper when I was making the other card, which had, or the other tag, which had the reds the and the greens. And I'd use the scraper to scrape that paper with paint all over it and let it blend here and there. So that's the paper that I'm using to make these little hand cut squiggles. Um, I'm not sure why it has yellow. That's kind of that, uh, I guess that that's the scraping of the light olive. When you scrape it out real thin, that's kind of the color it is, but it's got some reds, it's got some greens. It's got the same type of colors as we're on the tag already. So I just cut a few little pieces out of it and I glued them down over everything else with some glue stick, some Yoohoo glue stick. And it's starting to become something that I like. It's starting to become more interesting to me. I'm not as frustrated now when I'm putting the collage on. Um, the thing started out with collage at the bottom and then now it's got collage over the top. It definitely qualifies as squiggle. It's got squiggle all over it, whether they're cut pieces, whether they're drawn pieces, whether they're, whether they're colored in pieces. But I do wish it was brighter. I wish they had brighter colors. And I ended up with this kind of alizarin crimson hue, which is kind of a, a deeper color, which is what I was feeling at the beginning of the morning. <laughs> I've been having really bad dreams and not being able to sleep. I keep having this reoccurring dream that I'm swimming and there's, 
I'm just swimming along happily and then there's this big wave and I don't see it fast enough and it's a huge wave like a tsunami and I'm trying to swim away from it. I'm swimming as fast as I can trying to get away from it and then eventually it crashes over me and I'm sure that that has something to do with all the junk that's going on in all of our lives. I'm worried about everything. I'm worried about my friends. I'm worried about everything. My family just one of my family members was just diagnosed with uh, COVID. Not someone who lives with me, though. Someone who lives up in Idaho. And he's over 70. You know, it's just, everything is just such a mess. I wish you would all stop. So that's the reason I haven't been creating for the last couple of days. And that's the reason that I can't quite get in my groove here. But I did end up with being happy with this. I used some of my Jumbo Jet pencils this one, the reddish brown one is called Sanguine. And then I use the, also the white one. Um, those are oil impregnated charcoal in a fat pencil. And they're kind of fun. So then I had this piece of drip of resin. You know, when you're doing resin over something, you end up with excess that drips over. And I just peel them off of my mat. And I thought that looked kind of cool on there. It's subtle, but... Um, I just kind of liked how it highlighted that one tangled area. So I glued that on and then a large stick on gem over the top of it. And I used Mod Podge. Um, it's like crystal effects. I don't know. Mod Podge something. It's got a name. I'll link it below. But it's something you can get at Michael's. So if you don't have access to the crystal effects or the diamond glaze, the Judikins diamond glaze, this is a similar idea. It's something that dries completely clear and shiny. And when I took the photos, it wasn't completely dry. Um, so you do see a little bit of, of cloudiness in this, but once it's completely dry overnight, that that will just be like, like I spilled resin on <laughs> my tag and then I put, and then I put a thing in it, you know? Um, pretty cool. I hope you're enjoying this abstract August. I am. I, I really am enjoying doing all these abstracts. I love how everything is, is working out. And even this one, <laughs> I love this one at the end. At the beginning, I didn't. Uh, if you are enjoying it, please remember to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on those notification bells. I know some people are having problems with their notifications right now, so just keep trying. And also you can share this on Pinterest or Facebook. All those things help my channel grow. Also, you, I'll put a link to Art Joy of Sharing Art Community, and you can come and join us. Just make sure that you answer the questions. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye. <music>